welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and this is Wine Library TV. So, we're gonna get very, very serious because that's the kind of guy that I am, and we've got very interesting wines for you today. All the same grape variety. We've done a show on this a long time ago, but given the fact that there is a much bigger Vayner Nation out there, a lot more Vayniacs out there, I figured it needed a recap, and we're gonna focus today on Viognier. It is an absolutely very interesting white grape. It starts with a V, I approve, and more importantly, it's a tremendous alternative to Chardonnay with a wide range of different flavors, and and there's a lot of cool stuff going on with Viognier, so we're gonna focus on that in a second. Um, But before I do that, I wanna give out a huge shout out to a up and coming group. I think the CKCs are in trouble. The College Kid crew might be in trouble because uh, the stock exchange floor, the big floor, we're gonna call it the floor, is really buzzing about WLTV and big shout out to Bwig House and his whole crew and I'm really excited about this. I've been getting a lot of zaps from the floor, crazy humbling. Let's drive up Wine Library stock, guys, if you can. So thanks for watching, means a whole lot. And speaking of meaning a whole lot, Teaching means a whole lot. Many of you have been watching a long time and know my sister is a teacher. I want to give a huge, huge, huge shout out to Steven Armada because his brother Paul thinks he's going to be a great teacher. Congratulations on graduating. I feel real good. We're giving out big congratulations. Congratulations to Chris Mott for finding Wine Library and meeting such a great guy like me. Great job, Mott. Nice work. All right, let's really get focused and get into this. This is the EXP Viognier from R.H. Phillips, 14.5% alcohol content, 2005 vintage, a state bottled. Now, what's really nice about this is it's 10 bones, so it's a tremendous entry level. I get all these emails from all over the country, like Nebraska and Utah, and you know, where else? Uh, I don't know, you know, from Idaho, and, and a lot of places, a lot of small secondary states, I don't wanna call them secondary states, maybe less populated areas that aren't able to find a lot of wines that we do on WLTV, so I wanna apologize for that, first of all. Second of all, I wanna say, come and move to Jersey. The Dirty Jersey rocks. And third of all, it's why we've got the EXP. If you're gonna find any Viognier in, in around the country, the most widely distributed is the EXP from uh, from uh, R.H. Phillips, so hopefully this will do a good job and give a nice uh, example. I haven't had this in a whole, whole long time. This is now a nice colored wine. Uh, it's got a nice light golden aspect to it. It's not as dark maybe as some Chardonnays, but it's definitely, actually, it's very golden. It's got some great, great color. Let's give it a whirl. Now here's where we really separate Viognier from everything else. You know what this smells like? This actually has a beautiful pineapple component, but it has a, it has like a liqueur aspect to it. Almost like, do you remember those um, bottles you buy on New Year's? It's like a little chocolate champagne bottle, or like, or like old candy stores. It would be like a little chocolate. Uh, Jim Beam or Johnny Walker, and when you'd bite it, there'd be like alcohol covered, you know, flavored liqueur and. Uh, juice inside or whatever you want to call it. I remember thinking it was so cool because I could get drunk off of it. It was real, real cool. But anyway, it's got a little bit of that kind of component on the nose. A little a little bit of that. It's got a beautiful golden lemongrass smell. It's got a little bit of cantaloupe and a little bit of barley action going on in the nose. It's got a very aromatic nose and that's really where the big V, the Viognier, really separates itself from maybe every other white grape variety out there, maybe besides New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, at least for me, the explosion of the nose is so seductive. It's just, you know, it's bringing you in and right off the bat I have to tell you, just on nose alone, this wine is worth $10. It's fantastic, let's give it a shot. The alcohol is a little hot. There is a little too much heat on this wine in general. However, taking that aside, and not so easily can we take that aside because it is there, you would be very, very hard pressed to find many Chardonnays, $10 and under, out of California that possess this cut, this much realness. There's a beautiful, slight buttered, um, 
asparagus component going on in this on this wine. It's it's got a, a beautiful uh, lemongrass flavor again on the flavor profile, just like on the nose. A um, little bit of mango. It's got a really obvious component of lychee fruit. Uh, this is a very interesting little white wine. I'm gonna score this wine 89 points. I, I, you know, I'm gonna go 88 points. I'm getting a little happy. But let's go 88 points on this, and that's Altoon's number. This is extremely solid. Uh, I, I definitely think it's definitely worth seeking out. And this is really probably, I've had it earlier on, I'm really shocked over the development of this. This is actually really a lot better than I expected it to be, and I'm excited because so many times I talk up a grape. Many of you Vaniacs have been watching a while. It seems like it always happens. We, we talk up a grape, we get excited, and then the entry level one, the one that most can afford, the one that most people are gonna be able to go and seek out, doesn't bring the thunder. Heck, it stinks, it sucks, it's just not acceptable. So it's really nice to see an entry level on a grape variety like this come through and bring a little bit of heat. So I'm excited. And it brought a little heat too, so that's the only downside. Karina Sellers, 2005, Central Coast Viognier, 13.7 alcohol content, 16 US dollars. I picked this one because one, I've never had it, which is what I tend to like to do. And number two, um, I loved their Shiraz Viognier on WLTV not too long ago so much that I'm starting to think this might be a very serious producer. So I'm going to try this out. How about this, huh? Have you seen this? This is the new tea. The actual official Wine Library TV uh, t-shirt. So I'm sporting that today. I'm pretty excited that came in. So it's a nice little Friday. No couch today. Couch uh, lit on fire, believe it or not. It's a really big disaster. So I'll have to replace that. We'll, we'll give you more details on that in the future. Again, not as dark as the EXP. Um, a little bit lighter. 16 US dollars. Let's give it a whirl. This is more refined. This is more uh, really classic. It's, I, I get a good component of like a seashell component. I get a lot of sea because I'm getting a little bit of a salt water, kind of breezy, chilly, walk in Jersey Shore type action going on in this nose. That is also surrounded by a little bit of also, there's a little hint of mango and papaya here. It gets a little tropical, but it's very focused. It's a lot more razor sharp uh, than the EXP. EXP was more rounded and exciting and aromatic and a lot of fruit flavors and some creaminess, butter. This is a little bit more towards a, you know, really like the difference between an oyster and a fish with a lot of butter and lemon on it. This is more of the oyster action. You're getting a little of the seawater around the edges of the flavor. It's kind of interesting. It's very, very clean and precise on the nose. Let's give it a whirl and see what it's about on the flavor profile. So, almost like a cream puff explosion pastry in your mouth mixed with a corn muffin. I get a beautiful corn muffin component with a beautiful pastry, like just maybe almost corn muffin with, with the cream that you find in the middle of a, in clear, not in clear, a, a cannoli. Like the, the cream you find in the middle of a cannoli. This is really focused. It has a nice lemon scent as well. A little Sprite action, because I get a little le lime zingster in there as well, but very creamy and coating. Almost like the weight of pure caramel that you put on your ice cream, but it doesn't taste like caramel, but it's very thick. It's a very viscous attack on your palate. I really, really like this wine. This is really the kind of wine that's up my alley. It's got the crispness and the cleanness, but the weight, it's got beautiful flavors that really tend to go much more towards a pastry shop, which makes me excited. I love corn muffin, so that makes me excited. This is my style of wine. I'm going to score this wine 91 plus points. I think this is an extremely serious Viognier and one that I can see a lot of people jumping on and getting extremely enthusiastic about. For 16 bucks, I can't really recall a wine under $20 white on this show that I've been more into as a personal feeling. Um, this wine is really quite excellent. This is a wine that a lot of people have to seek out. You've gotta try this for yourself. This is good. Let's move on. Super pumped on this. 
This is the Foundry South African Viognier 2005. 16 US dollars and 91 points. Steven Tanzer, who's a great wine critic and a tough one. So 91 points from him is very interesting. Now Viognier, we need to talk about a little bit, is really stunning because not too long ago, Viognier in the 60s was almost wiped out. I think there was like 30 acres left in the entire world in France. And so it's really interesting to see it really gravitate towards the new world and what it's done in California and what we're seeing out of Australia. It's really become very interesting. There's been a newfound interest in Viognier. I find them to be very interesting wines. Now they're very complicated and they're very tough to grow, it's, which is probably, at the end of the day, why we don't see a lot of Viognier in the market because a lot of winemakers and vineyard managers and growers and farmers just don't want to make it because it's fickle, it's tough, it's a tough grape. So you know, it's just not the best product to work with and you know what, we, we lose out. I'm really excited about Viognier and I'm really excited that I'm doing this show and I hope a lot of people seek out a Viognier this weekend. Again, really nice color, um, definitely a little bit uh, a little bit lighter than the, uh, than the uh, first wine but probably on par with the second wine. Let's give it a whirl. Now this is the most smoky of the bunch. Um, actually, it's really oaky on the nose, and uh, ah, the oak monster is definitely making its first appearance on today's show, and I prefer when the oak monster is not on this show, unless it's very subtle, like one branch from the oak monster. So I'm a little perplexed right now on this Viognier because it's really coming off very Chardonnay-y on the nose. Very oaky, very uh, buttery. I get a smokiness as well, burnt wood. Which is not bad, but it's 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 really over the top on the nose. Hopefully not on the palate. This is where Viognier is tricky. It's saving the real process of this winemaking, in my opinion. I think it is overdone and over oaked, over fermented, surly presses, all that stuff. I I really feel that. This grape saved this wine. Had this been Chardonnay and made this way, this would be an atrocious, atrocious? This would be an atrocious, which is a mix between atrocious and what's the un? I don't even know, but it'd almost be like an attack of the oak monster and all his cronies in your mouth and they would just rip out every part of your palate. So, that being said, it's nice that it's a little bit cleaner and a little bit more lean. It's got a little, it's got a little oiliness to it, which I like. Almost like very, you know, like good old-fashioned olive oil component going on in the mid palate here. But the oak and the butter is a little bit too much, and really, it's kind of stripping what I love about Viognier um, for the most part out of this wine. I'm, I'm going to score this wine 88 points. Uh, I feel it's a little off balance. I'm getting some real high acidity on my upper gums. I could see this wine calming down and being a little better. I'm gonna disagree with Tanzer though. I, 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 the Carina is very similar in what this brings where it's nice and body and good fat, but a much cleaner, more refined, and more aromatic, and much more lean and, and complex and thought-provoking and really precise. This was really to the point. This one's coloring a little bit outside the lines if you get it, and, and that's really what's bothering me with this wine. Finally, this is very interesting. This is the Ba, that's right, Ba, I'm reading the, the way they pronounce it here. It's the Bilancha Viognier. And the Bilancha is uh, from Hawke's Bay in New Zealand. And New Zealand, as many of you know, is really one of my favorite places. I think some of your monks are really great. I've not had a lot of experience with Viognier from this part of the world, but uh, I'm excited about it. Let's give it a whirl. Now, you know what? It's Friday, and you know, you're in that mood to give away, and I'm a little Santa Clausy today. So you know what? These guys are here, and they're not here for no reason. This is Nikolai Volkov and the Iron Sheik, and they were once WWFs, not this WWE crap, WWFs, tag team champions. The first person in the comments section that leaves me the date when they won the tag team titles will get not only a men's new Wine Library TV t-shirt, but a woman's cut as well. So you and your better half, or vice versa, you and your least half can walk together hand in hand in a Wine Library TV marriage of love. So, first people to tell me the date these two guys won the Tag Team Championships gets two t-shirts. And Mott, since they're now available, please put a link right underneath of this and this 
so they can buy them. Anybody who wants these, they're going to go quick, I hope, maybe not. But nonetheless, we need them. Let's give this a whirl. Now this is really interesting because this one actually smells like shattered rock. If you've ever, like like me, you know, the guns, the big power jacking a sidewalk, you get that dust, the concrete dust and the rock, that's exactly what this wine smells like. And it's pretty scary, it's like really pinpoint. I do get a little bit of a lemon component as well. Lemon has really been dancing all over here today, which is totally fine with me because I adore the lemon. I, I wish I had a lemon tree in New York City that I could pick from. And, and it's really bright, this wine for sure. But the concrete rock mixed with the lemon and a little bit again, that olive oil component is coming through very obvious. It's very interesting. Let's give it a whirl. Man, this is awesome. You know what I hate about the wine industry with ratings? Ratings are bad nonetheless. People live and die by them. I'm just as much as fall. I use them, so I'm a jerk off. But, you know, a 90 and an 89, you should see the sales at Wine Library, it's a joke. But, what I really, we all know about that. What really perplexes me and gets me upset is that we pigeonhole wines. We don't, the major critics, Parker Spectator, they don't give many Rieslings, straight Rieslings, not dessert wines, 97, 98, 99. But a Cab can go there, a Bordeaux can go there, a Shiraz can go there. But even like Barolos, very few go to that 98, 99, 100 point scale. It's really weird and interesting to see wines get pigeonholed. And I think Viognier gets very pigeonholed to max out around 91 or 92. Let me tell you something about this Bilancia. This is a wine that absolutely brings the the thunder. This wine is extremely interesting because I'm going to tell you why. It legitimately takes what both of these wines do well, a little bit with the EXP, and it does what a great 50 to $75 white burgundy brings to the table. And what that is, is a complete attack and complete explosion and dominance over your entire palate. This wine attacks almost like in a cloud form when it hits your palate. It just completely took over my entire mouth and gave me silky, smooth flavor profiles. Let me just give it another sip because it was awesome. I'm completely blown away by this wine actually. It drinks so nice, it almost goes down like water and you would think that's horrible because where's the flavor? But it, when it really goes down your palate, it's doing that and then it expands. It's almost like one of those surgeon tools, you know, they like stick it in but then pss, like it expands and they do their thing, it's over my head. But that's how I want you to kind of look at it. This is a wine that really goes into your palate and almost expands to the way that it would probably blow up every single person's face that's watching this show. However, we enjoy it because the flavors are delicious. Then our face comes back together and we enjoy the overall experience of this wine. I am gonna score this wine. A little reason because of a point I want to make, but I'm going to score this wine 94 points, which is an outlandishly high score for me and for a Viognier. But I'm going to tell you something. I think it deserves it. This wine is spectacular, and am I giving maybe an extra point just because I want to prove a point? Maybe, but you know what? This is the kind of wine that you dream of. This is a perfect example of Viognier, why I love this grape, and for 20 bucks, it's an out and out steal. I'm going to be thrilled when people email me with their response to trying this wine. You may notice, because friends, I love friends. That's what, you know, that's what friends are for. You may have noticed, that Friends has now moved to the top of the screen. So if you haven't done it already, damn, I like the bounce, yeah. Friend me up, please. And I've added a new thing that you can be my friend on. So click it if you wanna be part of the fun fun. Also, you know what for fun? Let's see what we can do. Can somebody take the bull by the horn and start me a dig? And then can you all jump in and dig me up? So I want you to friend me up, dig me up, and I want you to answer the question of the day, which is very simple. I've never said I wasn't. I am a huge Yenta. So the question of the day is this. What are you doing this weekend? Because you, with a little bit of me, and all my new friends, and a little bit of dig action, we're changing the wine world, aren't we? <laughs>